Welcome to the Cosmic Business Breakthrough Podcast. I'm your host, Sophia Palace, and this podcast is for soulful entrepreneurs who want to harness the cosmic power of astrology to elevate their message, unlock flow, and attract their best clients ever. Join me every week and get excited to discover how you can use the energy of the cosmos to get the business breakthrough you've been waiting for. Okay, it's time for a bit of a personal episode and I feel like I'm ready to go a little further into something deeply personal that's transpired for me over the past three plus years. And of course, it's all tied to one of life's big astrological transits, and that is Uranus through the first house. Now, not everyone will experience this transit of Uranus through their first house because Uranus takes about 84 years to go around the entire zodiac, but probably most of us will at some stage of our lives experience it. Now, Before we head into all of that personal stuff, let me first explain a bit about the planet Uranus, the mythology, what it indicates and what you need to know to keep an eye on for yourself or what you need to consider about this in your own birth chart. Now, Uranus was the first planet found with the aid of a telescope. It was discovered by accident in 1781 by the astronomer William Herschel. But he originally actually thought it was either a comet or a star. He didn't realize it was a planet. It is one of our outer planets. It's seventh from the sun, and it was named after the Greek sky god Uranos, which means heaven or god of the heavens. And It's associated with the idea of the universal mind or consciousness. Uranus was also the father of Kronos, who we talked about in the Saturn episode recently. And he has an equally disturbing story about fearing and debilitating his children so much that one of them, Kronos, eventually overthrows him, castrating him and sending those all important bits into the Mediterranean. So yeah, he does have a bit of a complex story. However, Uranus, the planet Uranus, is also associated with the Titan Prometheus, who was a god of fire. Prometheus famously stole fire from the gods and returned it to earth. Once again, it had been taken from them by Zeus. And as the price of fire and as punishment for humankind in general, because Zeus didn't really like humans that much, Zeus had Prometheus nailed to a mountain and sent an eagle to eat his immortal liver, which constantly replenished itself. Now, this sounds like a terrible, terrible story, of course, but it's important to understand the mythology behind the planet's because we can take some meaning from these stories. So Prometheus was a culture hero and a humanitarian because he rebelled against the gods in order to bring civilization, to bring help to the humans and to bring wisdom. And as well, he's known for, you know, helping bring things like philosophy and mathematics to humankind. He's kind of this a bit of a hero. And because of that, you know, there is this long running dispute in in the astrology community about whether Prometheus is actually the correct mythology to use for Uranus, or if it is the sky god Uranus, because they represent slightly different things. But I think there is like a common consensus that it's a bit of a blend of the two. You know, there is this theme with Uranus of that idea of the universal mind or the universal universal consciousness. And there is also this idea of the Prometheus principle, which is that Uranus brings something to humanity. It brings fire. It brings something. But there is 
kind of like this punishment for that. You know, there is, there can be a backlash from a Uranian thing. You know, if, for instance, Uranus is often associated with rebellion, there's often a backlash for a rebellion. What is the punishment for this, for progress, that kind of thing? That's the idea. And since its discovery in the 1700s, Uranus has really upset the astronomical and the astrological apple cart. It's always been full of surprises. And physically, the planet is quite unique. It's tilted on its axis. It spins kind of like a spinning top. It looks different. Um, You know, we didn't know it had rings until much later after its discovery. Like these little things continue to be discovered about Uranus. Outwardly, Uranus is correlated with unexpected things, with shocking things, with strange things. But more deeply and psychologically, it's associated with the process of individuation, that Carl Jung concept of individuation, of someone becoming whole, of someone integrating the dark with the light parts of themselves and and becoming that real authentic whole self. And that is something that I love about Uranus. It is considered an awakening planet. In your chart, it's there to challenge everything that is stale and unpredictable. It's unconventional and anti-establishment and very much associated with developing your own authenticity. But it's important to know there's also a cutting away or a separating associated with Uranus. There's a sense that We need to individuate or define ourselves in our own right, which can sometimes mean separating from our past, our societal patterns, and potentially some significant relationships. So as I said earlier, it takes about 84 years for Uranus to transit or to move through the 12 signs of the zodiac. So that means many people won't live to see it return to where it was when they were born, But most of us will experience what's called a Uranus opposition. If you live to the age of 42 or to 44, you will experience a Uranus opposition. And this is the transit most commonly associated with the midlife crisis. And this is probably the most similar to the transit that I'm going to talk about, which is my Uranus transit, which was Uranus through my first house across my ascendant degree specifically because at that point where any planet but in this case Uranus crosses one of the key angles of your chart one of those key degrees I'm not just talking about when it enters Taurus which is my first house I'm talking about when it crosses the exact degree of my ascendant which is 12 degrees of Taurus and based on the exact time that I was born that is when you experience that transit the most profoundly, the most significantly. Uranus moved into Taurus, my first house, in May 2018. It reversed or retrograded back into Aries not long after that. And then it settled in Taurus for the long haul from March 2019. And it will stay there until 2026. It's a seven year cycle. It's seven years in each sign, basically. Interestingly, as soon as Uranus settled into Taurus in March 2019, my life started to move and shake in a few dramatic ways. First of all, I had a major success in my career. I spoke on stage at a significant industry event and everything felt amazing. I felt like things were finally moving forward in my business I had some great clients. My income was growing into the six figures. Life was good. Like I had, you know, I had just come out of the the kind of baby making years. My youngest child was two and a half years old, uh, almost three. And so I was starting to feel a real shift, you know, in my ability to work again and, and build my business. And within weeks of that event, of me speaking at this industry event and kind of showcasing my business. My husband at the time told me he wanted to separate. I've spoken about this in probably the introductory episodes, but 
I'm going a little bit deeper into this today. So I felt at that moment like I had been hit by a ton of bricks. I was not expecting it. I was not at all prepared for him to say those words, I want to separate. I hadn't seen it coming at all. It was shocking to me. It was very Uranian in that sense. You know, Uranus brings those unexpected, those shocking moments. And yet that massive change in circumstance ultimately led to a whole new version of me. But at the time, it felt incredibly difficult. It felt incredibly not just shocking, but shattering in a deep way. My identity was suddenly shattered. Everything that I had thought about myself was kind of pulled out from underneath me. Like everything that I had built up, the foundation that I had built up as my identity was suddenly no longer there. It was a very tower moment for me. And it wasn't smooth sailing from there. Obviously, Separation and divorce is an extremely harrowing process and it's one that I didn't take lightly at all, especially because we had two children and I knew personally what it was like to experience divorce as a child. So we didn't make the decision to divorce immediately. It was a process. We ended up making the final decision to end things while we were on a family holiday, which I had planned for at least a year prior to hearing him say those words, I want to separate. So at that point on that holiday, again, it was like I suddenly understood the marriage was done and there was no means of fixing it. Like I came to a point where I had another one of those Uranian moments of awakening where I went, no, this is done. This can't be fixed. No amount of me wanting it to be fixed is going to fix this. The only way forward at that time was through finding my independence, another very Uranian theme. And so it was. We separated and I'd started to discover again who I was and what I wanted from my life outside of my marriage. I realized that I'd been boxing myself in for a very long time and the things that I really wanted to do were not mainstream at all. I didn't love my copywriting career, even though I had success, I didn't love it as much as I wanted to love it. I realized I loved learning about tarot and astrology, and I loved having long conversations with my friends about the power of the universe. I was looking for myself. I was in that process of individuation, of integrating the parts of myself I'd always kept hidden, the parts I was ashamed of, along with those parts that I was most proud of. Like there was this real sense of like the falling away, allowing the shame, allowing the fear, allowing the shadow to come through me. And partly that was through my learning of tarot and astrology that I allowed that to come through. And I was also recognizing the parts of myself that I was really proud of and that that I could love and that I could show more love to. So I can't really explain this process in one short podcast episode, but what I can say is during that time, you know, that 2020, basically 2019, 2020, 2021, I read a lot and I started writing. And this is my own personal experience. Obviously it doesn't work for everyone and this doesn't happen for everyone during a a Uranus transit, but I started writing a book. It was a fictional book, but with elements of my truth and the generational truths of the women in my family lineage. And I joined a writing group to share that book with others. I'm not sure whether that book will ever be published, but I do know the process of writing it all down in that form and actually being able to share it with other people who didn't know me at all was extremely cathartic. And even though I haven't written much at all in the past 12 months, I'm still in regular contact with those people from that group. And they have seen a side of me that many other people may never truly understand from reading that story. And the truth of all of this, this was, you know, a very internal process. And while I was going through that intense internal process, 
my business completely stalled. And I know that 2020 was a tough year for a lot of people, but mine was a tough year for different reasons. I had to sell my house and completely rethink my financial situation. I had absolutely zero energy for copywriting work. Like it just didn't light me up anymore. My soul was searching for other things. And of course, 2020 and COVID was happening at the same time. And my dad got really sick, which was not COVID related. And I was spending a lot of time driving back and forth from the hospital in Brisbane. So my business went on a kind of hiatus in 2020. And I was lucky enough to have the means to support myself and my kids while that whole thing happened. Then at the end of 2020, I decided to take my business in a new direction. I was like, I'm done with sitting here feeling stuck. I'm done with this. I can see the possibility here because I had discovered a love for astrology and it had begun to take over my life (laughs) in a good way, right? I could see so much potential for it in working with copywriting clients and developing better marketing strategies and really, you know, getting to the core of a lot of things that were going on for my coaching clients as well. So all of these things were happening, but I had no idea how to make it work. So I joined a mastermind, a new mastermind. And within weeks, in an unexpected turn of events, another Uranian thing, that coach decided to hire me as her launch copywriter and head of content. So my business went in a different kind of hiatus while I worked solidly on building her six-figure launches. But I had had that moment of clarity of like, I know what I need to do, but it was also like I needed to rebuild myself. So becoming part of that other business allowed me to build my finances back up, gave me that consistent income again, which felt amazing after going through separation and divorce. Especially as women, we can feel incredibly financially debilitated. And I'm not sure of what other way to put it, but I needed to know that I could provide for myself and my children. I needed to know that I needed to have faith in myself again, and that's what that gave me. But at the same time, I knew I wasn't being completely true to myself and my dream. So at the same time as this is all happening, I'm still churning over, you know, what my business is going to become and who I am going to become. Then one day in June 2021, after a family photo shoot with my kids and my mum, just a regular family photo shoot, I realized my name was no longer right for me. I had kept my married name, which was Arthur, since the divorce because it's what all my clients and friends had known me for for the past 10 years. It had felt deeply uncomfortable to let that part of my identity go. And yet that one day in mid-June 2021, I knew it was time. Now, as a Taurus rising, change is usually a little difficult for me, but this change to shift my name to Sophia Palace, which by the way, is not my maiden name, but a name I chose for myself, felt like the only decision I could make for my future. Again, it was very Uranian. In fact, the week that I had that urge to change my name was the same week Uranus crossed directly over my ascendant degree. As I said, 12 degrees of Taurus. That was the same week. And that was the first time Uranus crossed my ascendant degree. It has crossed back over that since. I think I have one more pass potentially, or I might be done. But after that first crossing, there was no going back. That shift in my name seemed to herald this new era for me and for my business. I felt this strong break away from convention but I also felt like I was doing exactly what needed to be done. And for me, as, as both a Taurus rising who doesn't love change, but also a Capricorn who loves tradition and convention, this was extremely shocking to me that I was, I was okay with changing my name and not only changing my name, but changing my name to a name I chose for myself. To some people that might not seem like a big deal, but to me, that was a huge moment. And obviously a name change is quite a process in itself, you know, especially when you're changing a business name, but also changing my name 
you know, my legal name, everything changed. And that has been a process and it is still ongoing, but I think pretty much everything is now in order. That was a massive shift. That was a very Uranian shift. And it's not surprising to me that a couple of months after I did that, I met my person, the person that I I love, the person I'm in love with, my partner, my spouse. I met him a couple of months after changing my name. So he never knew me as the old version. He only ever knew the new version of Sophia. And he came into my life in a very unexpected Uranian way, of course. And since then, he has continued to shake things up completely and help me to awaken to even more patterns and elements of my life that were limiting me. And I'm very, very grateful for the lessons and the insights that being in this relationship has given me both personally and for my business. And a couple of months later, after meeting Carlos, I did a photo shoot to upgrade my brand. And when I got those photos back, I saw a woman that I didn't recognize. She was more confident, more powerful, more sure of herself. I mean, not completely, but so much more than before. At that same time, I hired a virtual assistant to help me in my business. And I started creating more and more astrological content, all while learning more and more about it and getting more immersed in the world. I noticed a deeper sense of freedom in how I was communicating. I stopped caring as much about what people would think. I started focusing more on what felt true to me. And that is the real beauty of a Uranus transit. You don't have time for the BS anymore. The real you has to come out because you don't have the energy for playing pretend. Now, this transit didn't happen on its own. It's important for me to say that I have a fixed chart. And if you're like me and you also have a fixed chart, i.e. you have Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius rising, it's likely you've been going through a lot of change and restructuring in the past 18 months or so. And that's not just because of Uranus, but also because of Saturn. So I've not only had Uranus in my first house, but I've had Saturn in my 10th house of career of public reputation, squaring my natal Saturn in Scorpio in the seventh house of relationships. I've also had Uranus oppose Pluto and Saturn during this transit, and I've experienced a number of eclipses in these key parts of my chart as well. So basically change has been happening whether I wanted it to or not. It's been going on. There has been a lot going on. But I am incredibly grateful for my Uranus transit. And I know many people who've experienced a major planet transit like a Uranus or a Pluto, you know, or even a Saturn transit, go on to find more fulfillment in their life afterwards because there is this real shift, this real shift that happens. And it's literally a coming of age. It's something you can only learn with time. It's something that only comes around because, you know, of the age, because of the timing. It's something you could only learn with time and a hell of a lot of patience as it's happening. So as we wrap up this week's episode, I want you to have a think about any big changes that have happened in your life lately. What have you learned about yourself through the process? What I love about astrology and understanding my own chart and my transits and progressions is that I learn so much more about myself and I can actively integrate the changes as they're happening. I am participating in my life more than just having it happen to me. And that's what I want for you as well. That's what I want for my clients, for them to participate more in their life and their business rather than just have things happen. You know, there's so much insight to be found from these changes, these transits in our lives, these activations in our lives. Okay. Now, on another note, there is a lot of astrology happening this month, and that is October, the time of recording. And if you do want to know more about what's in store, I would encourage you to check out last week's episode 
on the eclipses and my workshop, Three Cosmic Events You Need to Know Before the Close of 2022. We don't talk about Uranus, but we do talk about Saturn, Mars, and Jupiter, all planets you should get to know and love. And of course, if you want to work with me to understand yourself and your business on a much deeper, richer level, so you can do better, more powerful marketing and create the business you have always wanted, book in a Cosmic Business Breakthrough one-on-one session with me. The link will be in the show notes. As always, thanks for listening and keep watching the stars. Thanks for joining me on the Cosmic Business Breakthrough. If you'd like to learn more about what I do, head to sophiapalace.com or follow me at sophiapalace over on Instagram. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, I'd love for you to take a moment and review the show if you found it helpful and share it with a few friends. Thanks again, and I'll speak to you next time.